Hello. Oh, what's going on there? No, it works. Ignore me. Lost all my stuff. What's up? Great start. Uh, my name is Flynn. We would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are streaming and creating from today. We'd also like to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Uh, my name is Flynn. I'm the very professional host here at um, <laughs> Toby Live Asia Pacific. Um, and I'm going to do my best from here on out with that low bar as we started out. Um, I'm Flynn and I'm here today uh, for the very first time on Adobe Live with illustrated designer, photographer, um, Chris Casarius, which I probably pronounce incorrectly. Yeah, Chrisaris, nice Chrisaris. I threw an extra <laughs> iron. I don't know yeah. why. Um, AKA CK Creative or CK as I will refer to you from now yeah. on. What's going yeah. on? Yeah, not much, bro. Uh, thanks for having me on. Great intro. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was explaining to Flynn before, like an hour ago, my internet wasn't working. And it's like, as soon as the live stream is about to happen or like on the day, it's just something goes wrong. So um, now nah, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm really excited to, to jump on. How, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, doing really well. Excited to have you on as well. So I've seen like a quite a few of your like videos and online content. I think like some of the videos kind of discussing like design or things that were happening are the things that kind of popped out to me and then kind of mm -hmm. dove a little bit more into your projects and your work and and what you do and i thought i think that we should have him on adobe live and share some of the things that you do because you kind of have a fingers in quite a few pies there's like the content creation side of thing there's yep. design there's photography and then there's also illustration um so what's going on do you sleep yeah <laughs> not really to be honest <laughs> now i um I'm just a creative, I feel. I started doing a graphic design when I was in like year 10, just as a, as a class called VCD, Visual Communication Design, and I fell in love with Illustrator. Um, but then as I've continued to grow up, develop, um, I've always wanted to just try new things here and there. And Illustrator has so much potential with different types of mediums and art forms. So uh, I've done a little bit of vector art. Uh, illustration has been something that I've kind of dipped my toes into as a result of client work, but I've found a bit of a passion for it there. Um, I try uh, to do photography uh, in my spare time as well, and then finding overlaps between the two so that I can post it to Instagram and share my work. Even like some mid-journey stuff, um, AI, uh, I've been kind of leaning into as well. So I don't want to kind of like funnel myself into one niche and say, that's what I only do. I'm trying to right. just, whilst I'm young, at least try a bit of everything and uh, yeah, just have fun with it. So yeah, that's why you see me kind of all over the shop. I'm, I am all over the shop, to be honest. <laughs> that's awesome. That's good. We've actually had quite a few creators, I think, like particularly, I would say, people earlier on in their career who do everything. They do so many things. And I remember a time when people were very much, much, much more siloed. So it's quite interesting how quickly I think creatives either need to or prefer to pick up different you know, skills and, you know, experiment in different fields and combine the two. It's a very interesting time, I think, to be a creative. Um, and it's great to have people like you on Adobe Live. So I thought Thank maybe you. we could have a quick look at maybe one or two projects or um, let's let's just share your screen and then you can kind of drive, maybe give us something to give a bit more of an idea of uh, what you're up to and then we'll jump into the content for today. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's jump into it. So I've got my uh, Instagram up now, which... It isn't my portfolio. I've got a website where I have a lot of my client work and more specific jobs, but this is where I post everything pretty much that, you know, I want people to see, uh, and I only really work on things that I want people to see, I guess. So, um, let's, a lot of what I've been posting recently has been photography. Uh, sometimes I'd like to combine as of recently graphics with my photography, because I just feel like it really helps convey the story. I love both. And, um, I mean, I'm exporting my carousels in Illustrator, which we'll go over in the next live stream. Um, so it's easy for me to kind of create these assets. Um, uh, but I always wanted to find a way, how could I combine photography and design, to be honest. I've been searching mm. for the perfect balance for a while. Uh, so this is just something that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, as we go down the page, you'll start to see more vector art. Um, uh, I've combined like photography and vector art here where I only vectorize the clothing. It's a very monotonous, uh, time, <laughs> time intensive, uh, task. But, yeah. Uh, I, I loved see it. How that will be. Very, yeah. Yeah. Very therapeutic. Um, low, you'll see some logos. Uh, you'll see some, um, group projects as well. Actually, if I scroll down, we, uh, we did this thing a couple years ago called the Mar project Marvel where 
I gave uh, all my or everyone that wanted to join in a superhero. And then they, with a tutorial I provided on YouTube, uh, created vector art out of it. And I put it together in this one big fight scene. Oh, cool. Um, which was awesome. So a lot of community projects I want to do. Um, I, I do love the community and, and uh, the, the, cr the creative community specifically, but also like um, the design and Adobe Illustrator community as well. Um, so yeah, just, Honestly, it's all over the shop. Um, I've been doing this stuff for like five years, I would say now. Um, not really too sure what the goal, the end result is. Like, I want to grow the community. I want to, I want to teach people and share my passion with with those because I feel like it really, not necessarily saved me, but you know, it gave me purpose for sure. Um, and I just want to share that with, with as many people as I can. So nice. Yeah. Really yeah. cool. I love it. And we were talking about all the different things that we could do with um, like a, with Adobe Live. I think we ended up having quite a lot more ideas for future streams, um, mm. but we did narrow it down to kind of two things, which we'll talk a little bit more about Wednesday on Wednesday. Um, mm -hmm. But I think today um, we focused on, um, yeah, Illustrator, how to get the most out of your vector artwork um, and ultimately like creating patterns and using line art and color and things like that. We're going to talk vectors and everything today. So I'm Let's pumped. Uh, Illustrator is my uh, first love as well. So it is. Um, yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, so, how good is that? <laughs> let's jump. Let's jump in. We do a lot of uh, Photoshop live streams and I'm a little bit like lost half the time, even after doing it for so many years. Oh. Like, how do you do that thing again? Um, but yeah. Illustrator is my jam uh, or my cannoli as well, yes. which I think we can see here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I have to agree with you on that one. I don't know I don't know why I jumped into Illustrator first. I think it's just what my teacher told me to open up right. in, in the first class. And then uh, that's what I kind of just jumped into tutorial-wise. And uh, I still don't know Photoshop to this day. So there, there you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, I love Illustrator. I love the vector look that it has. Like if we zoom into this cannoli here, it's just so clean and sharp. Um, Illustrator doesn't really work well with Gaussian blurs or like anything pixelated really because it's not a raster-based software. Um, but you play to its strengths and it gives you this like just really smooth, crisp re result, which I love. So um, today we're going to be illustrating some cannolis and i know it's very niche and specific um but uh i do work for a pajama company and they create uh a lot of like kind of sleepwear and, and slouch wear uh which they like to have cool creative patterns on so they give me three briefs a month and uh this month we're doing cannolis as one of them so i figured why not jump on and show you guys a little bit of that nice. process Oh, cool. So this is like a real project. So the pajama company exists and they print print these out and um, and you do all the design work for them, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, it's super fun, to be honest. Like, I feel pretty blessed to be able to call this my job. Um, uh, yeah, to see it come from like brief ideation all the way through to like development. I don't really sketch it out, to be honest. Um, I kind of just jump straight into Vector. Um, and then to, to see it come to life, via the color and then to see people wearing it putting it up on their stories and right. um yeah the novelty is worn off a little bit because you do get used to it but mm. when you kind of take a step back and look at everything you're like wow you know this is awesome yeah that's cool um, yeah so i should mention the process or, bef yeah. bef sorry before we move on just um everyone in live chat we are live today as well so um we we are really live so if you want to test that theory uh feel free to uh, say hello. I can see some some folks in chat. Um, Johanna's in chat, and Anita as well. Clinton is here. Hi, how you doing? If you have any questions uh, for CK as we're rolling along, don't hesitate to throw them in the Behance chat. We'll also try to keep an eye on the YouTube one, but Behance is the primary chat we're using today. Um, and welcome. Thanks for hanging out. Back to you, CK. Yeah, sweet. Do you, uh, so with with this with this live stream, do you want me to kind of like take the reins and just explain what I want, yeah. or is it okay if I ask you some questions as well about like you said you used Illustrator? Go for it. Was there was there any history back there? Like, did you ever freelance as a designer or? I didn't really. I mean, I freelanced as a designer, like every graphic designer did, which meant I had no job. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got really lucky. I went straight into packaging from design school. Yep. Um, with a really good company and I was mm -hmm. a really bad designer. So I was extremely lucky 
and I did a did like an internship back then when um, unpaid internships weren't like a naughty thing to do. It was a good thing to do, and yeah, yep. um, and that was awesome, and they were great. But I, I spent three months there, and um, they offered me a job at the end of it, which was incredible. But I wasn't expecting, so I had planned to go backpacking for six months. Oh no, okay. And so I told them that, and then um, one of them was really nice about it, and they said, well, great, but uh, we need someone now, but why don't you give us, so we're gonna have to hire someone else. Yep. But why don't you give us a call when you get back? Um, okay. And then the other person uh, told me to get out. Wow. <laughs> they were like, you're prioritizing travel over this opportunity, like get out of here. So. That didn't go down super well, and uh, I didn't have a job when I got back. But um, and then yeah, did the freelancing thing for a couple of years, went way out of design, and then now here I am, way back into it. So yeah, crazy. I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm not too sure how old you were at that at that point, but I, I would definitely, you. yeah, I would definitely uh, prefer uh, to live and travel and get those experience in you. Yeah, to be it was honest. a good call at the time. It had to had to be done. Everything yeah, was paid I for. Like I would have literally had to just cancel everything. It was like not going to happen but um yeah. it felt bad for sure like have i made this huge mistake but it, it wasn't you probably look back now and you're like oh, i'm glad i made that decision oh so glad yeah for sure but yeah for mm. a couple of years afterwards it was like oh was that the was that my chance <laughs> was that my shot yeah you um, can always second guess retrospect's a beautiful thing but nah travel travel over work you, you there's a saying you live to work not work to live right yeah or yep. maybe i said that the wrong way around not too sure um, and back to questions for, for you, uh, tell me, Is, tell me. Islay has a question here in chat. Uh, great question. Thank you, Islay. Um, hope it's okay to ask, how did you get the job with the pajama company? Did they approach you? Yeah, they did approach me actually. Um, I was actually with, uh, the, the owners last night out for dinner and we did speak about this. Mm. Uh, they, I think my dog wants to leave. Sorry. One second. Yeah, so go one... for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, and I think it's really cool, uh, to, to share that sort of information, um, like with each other about how you get work. Um, hundred percent. I'm going to guess it's either through friends and family or like someone in that sort of chain, or they saw you work on social media. That's my, that's my guess. Um, they got referred to me by a friend that, uh, I was not, well, not, not a friend, but like a, someone that just knew that I did. I did graphic design and, I, right. and I'd done a little bit of work for her. Mm. Uh, she was in the fitness industry. He, I'm not sure if he put up a story or was putting out the feelers, but uh, she referred me onto him and he sent me a DM. And I was like, let's do it. It, it didn't start like this though. They needed a rebrand. So they had a logo that was done uh, via Upwork. Have you heard of the platform? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, they were like, you know, it's on the right track, but we're not really 100% sold with it. So can you make it better? And I'm like, 100%, let's do it. And then that job turned into, oh, and we're actually making pajamas. Do you reckon you could do illustration? And I hadn't done much illustration by that point. It was predominantly vector art mm -hmm. um, and logos. But once you know your, your way around Illustrator, you can kind of adapt um, to, to any style, I feel. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I kind of embarked on this illustration journey and here we are. Nice. And we should yeah, get back know, to, yeah. um, what we're doing at the time now as well. So can you just kind of describe exactly what you're kind of doing now? You're trying to give a bit of depth and like light to make this a 3d cannoli rather than a 2d cannoli. Yeah. Yeah. So as, uh, yeah, as we're talking, I'm, uh, literally coloring in this cannoli. We're, we're going to get to this guy afterwards, but. I'm, uh, I'm pretty much just slicing up the color uh, with the Pathfinder tool and my pencil tool. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a, another way to do this. There's probably some designers watching now like, what is he doing? <laughs> um, there's always multiple ways to do things, but um, uh, yeah. I'm literally using my pencil tool, which is N on the keyboard. And I'm drawing off the, well, this color here. So onto the so I start on the line art, which is also an expanded shape at the moment, um, and then uh, onto the color where I want the shade to go, and then back off it again. And when I change this to a stroke, keep it selected, use my direct selection tools to select the color. Then all I do is just click divide, and now we can change this as an individual individual color. Nice. Um, 
and I just repeat that again and again and again. I saw your live stream with uh, James. Is it James Barnard? James Barnard, yep. Yeah, and he was describing how he has multiple ways to like kind of work through the software, like keyboard shortcuts. Right. Uh, I have a very similar thing. I've got um, a gaming mouse, which has got a bunch of little oh, hotkeys. That's like a Dota gaming mouse or Yeah, something. like League of yeah. Legends. Yeah. League of Legends, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Let's not derail and start talking about computer games because we'll be stuck in it for the next 45 minutes. Um, but yeah, I recognize <laughs> I recognize that mouse uh, quite well. Um, yep. That's interesting because you could just program each of those keys, right? To whatever yeah. you wanted. Yeah. 100%. I think if I, if I come up to edit keyboard shortcuts, I've got a vector art um, kind of like you got illustrated defaults and then I've made my own, which is called vector art. Nice. Um, yeah. So I think one all the way through till five, including shift sometimes does different things. So if you see me kind of working with different tools and moving around quickly, it's because that's what's going on. Nice off camera. Um, and what shortcuts do you have on there? Like, what did you find that would just be such a massive time saver for you when creating vector art that you wanted it to have its own button? Um, so, uh, number one is the direct, sorry, uh, the selection tool. Mm -hmm. Um, number two, actually changes a fill to a stroke. So oh, nice. which is that over. Number three is the eyedropper. So I can select a color straight away. Yeah. Um, number four is my pencil tool. Sorry, right. my pen tool. Um, and then control one actually deletes. So I just deleted that just by hitting control one. Um, and I think there might be a couple few more but maybe maybe i don't even oh i've got center back as well so i think right. if i yeah so control four as well sends it to the back so that's actually because when you're creating vector art what you want to do is you want to like create a shape like this make it a color of the image that's behind it and then you want to like make another shape make it a separate color and then send it to the back. And then that's how you get, if you keep doing it again and again and again. Right. Yeah, you get it, but we can talk about that another day. But nice. um, yeah, it just helps me work through the workflow. Are there any shortcuts that you like to use predominantly? In the I don't, I'm, I'm vanilla with almost everything. Um, I set up some keyboard shortcuts, but often I'm finding that I need to be talking about what their actual like vanilla keyboard shortcuts are like often what we'll do with streaming is we'll have someone on like, yeah. i think even james has said this i know some of our other uh, illustrator friends have shortcuts in photoshop and things and you ask them what's the how do you do that again they're like i don't remember and they don't remember <laughs> how to do it because they do it so often that they have a shortcut or like that initiates an action mm. or, or something because it's something they just do so 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 much like hours on hours a day that they've just you know made a shortcut for it um, so yeah, I tend to keep everything pretty vanilla. Um, and I jump between devices quite a lot as well. So yeah, that's the bit. hard part and PC and Mac. And I have about three different things that I use for different things. So, yeah. Yeah. When you're uh, switching over to then Mac and everything's changed again and yeah, my, my, uh, my laptop doesn't, doesn't actually like, it doesn't process this mouse, like the, right. the, uh, the macros, the buttons. So I have to literally switch my brain like back to vanilla illustrator when I'm yep. using it. Um, but, but yeah, I feel, I feel very at home when I'm, when I'm on my desktop. Yeah, exactly. And then suddenly you find yourself, that's the only place that you do design because even if it's only slightly faster, you just feel so much more, it's a much more comfortable environment, much more enjoyable as well. Um, yeah, the screen's important. bigger and harder thing. Yeah. Yeah. I've got multiple, multiple screens here. Not that anyone can see, but I've got one on the left, one on the right, I work off the middle. So like a spaceship. <laughs> like my dream as a kid to have like the ultimate gamer setup. Yeah. Now all I do is draw shapes all day. <laughs> How's the uh, chat looking? I can't see the chat. Usually when I live stream, I've got like the, the chat up on one screen and yeah. It was a little um, bit ab abnormal for Yeah, me. we're going. We're going. Just folks saying stuff. Yeah, let us know if you want uh, me to pass anything on to CK. Um, as I said, so organized. Oh, my God, goals. Yeah, I think um, like mastering keyboard shortcuts for yourself is such a game changer. Like it's, it's, it's really crazy good. But, of course, it's quite hard to find out what they are without a bit of trial and error. Um, 
like knowing what you're particularly, you know, going to be advantaged of. But yeah, definitely recommend it. Start with three. Like think of three things that you just do all the time uh, mm. and uh, create some shortcuts out of it. You don't need to copy someone else's shortcuts. I think that's a really important thing. Um, yeah, Clinton asks, I assume the cannoli is vanilla flavored. Yes, it is vanilla flavored. Um, I was actually thinking of asking the, the client whether to make one like chocolate flavored. Maybe, yep. You know how cannoli has like one vanilla one and one chocolate. Um, I was thinking that we're going to add some um, choc chips and some pistachios onto them uh, at one point. So we're going to add a little bit of detail right now where we're just doing the shading, um, which is always a fun part. But uh, yeah, yeah, great, great presumption. Was it was it Quinton? That was Clinton. Clinton, Clinton. asked that question. Clinton. Um, do you, yeah, how do you find uh, with, with the audience from Adobe Live, do you see a lot of similar uh, faces or names. Yeah, we kind of watch. have like core crew of people that will jump in and out depending, like regardless of the stream, and then we'll have new folks that jump in. So quite a new, new few new faces here today. So yeah, welcome to Adobe Live. It's lovely to have you here. Um, love to have your questions as well as they come through. It's always, always fun. Yeah, because often I'm working through and I don't really pick up on what would be worthwhile to like kind of just like stop and talk about. Like um, when you're doing your streams? Oh, just well, e even when I'm working, like let's say we're talking now. Um, yeah, or, or when I'm doing my streams, like it's hard to recognize what someone that maybe has just started using Adobe Illustrator would want to know yeah. or for me to elaborate on. Um, but yeah, so if there's any questions, please feel free to hit me up. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, on that on that point, it is very difficult. You usually don't know until the stream's finished, like um, maybe what level people are at or what they're interested in. It can depend on the the guest as well and the type of content of a stream. Like if we're doing something that's like mogets in After Effects for professionals and stuff, then you know we're gonna you, you're gonna get like professional editors or something like that. But if we're doing yeah. something a bit more wide audience in general, then there'd be more people from kind of different different levels. You might have senior designers, people with a lot of experience. You might have students and people who are just kind of uh, hobbyists even into yeah. design, you know, which is super cool. So yeah, any questions, throw them in, throw them in chat. About freelancing or anything as well, doesn't have to be necessarily specific to the topic. Yeah, true actually, because that is a big part of my life as well means that I'm always in Adobe Illustrator. <laughs> um, but you know what I found, Flynn, actually, funnily enough, like you'd think I'd, I would know this software back to front, which I think I do, but there's always something more to learn. Heaps. Always. Oh, yeah. these, um, I'll, I'll tell you, there's, um, yeah, Illustrator and Photoshop, they've been around for a long time. There's a lot of stuff that are, there's a lot of hidden stuff in there. And like even just the way that the programs um, operate, um, Photoshop even more so has like yeah. hidden menus and like crazy things that you can do just because it's, it's been around forever. Um, but yes, we'll often get sort of people that have a couple of years experience kind of using software. Um, they're like, oh, I pretty much mastered it. And, but it's actually often tip of the iceberg. But I think what's really good about Illustrator and I think also Photoshop is that, is that you really only need to know you know, maybe 10 different tools or 10 different things to do 80% of what you really need to do to be professional, I yep. would say. Yep. And then you kind of niche down after that. But like, it's kind of easy to learn hard to master, I guess, in that sense. But you don't need to. Like, I know so yeah. many professionals, like, um, you know, such as yourself, like people that are building a career on, on using the tool that just don't touch half the stuff anyway. It's fine, which is fine. They don't need it. Like... Yeah, oh, I agree. Story. I resonate. Uh, yeah, <laughs> full stop. Full stop. Yeah. Um, I uh, I resonate with that so much. I feel like I hit a point with Illustrator where I was like, wait a second. I was like, with my current knowledge, I feel like I could almost replicate like whatever I see someone else make. Like I can identify yeah. the exact way, style, and approach that they've taken, or or if not, I could apply my own approach and. Um, and and you know give it a really good good red hog crack with with a specifically like vector uh vector based artwork yeah um and then i was like wow that's actually really cool to be able to like identify that and be able to go into illustrator and 
uh, replicate it because I know it to a certain level. So I feel like I went past this point mm. of like, okay, I understand the software, like it clicks. Yeah. Um, and I feel like people with Photoshop as well, like you might not know exactly how to do something, but you have the tools and the knowledge to troubleshoot. Yeah. And um, yeah, I felt like I became, the Illustrator became a bit of a problem solver for me. Like soft, like, do you know what I mean by that? No, you encounter elaborate. A oh, okay. <laughs> Where like you would encounter a problem and um, you'd be like, okay, how do I resolve this? Um, how do I get from A to B with the, the tools and knowledge that I have? Um, and if you have to search up a tutorial, sure, that's where you, that's where you learn. But um, yeah, I got to the point where I wasn't really searching anything else up. I was just kind of working around the software and figuring things out for myself. Mm. Um, and that's where it kind of clicked for me. I'm like, oh, I'm getting pretty decent at this. Yeah. And I think um, both methods are really important. If you just watch the tutorials and follow them like back to back, then that's, that's a really good way of learning um, mm -hmm. and practicing and things. But at the same time, making mistakes and poking around and being like, what does this button do? Or what happens if I do this, but it's not with vector art, it's with a JPEG or an SVG or, you know, mucking yeah. around with things, you know. Um, experimentation is very important. I'm going to jump back to some of these questions because they're coming Let's do in it. hot. Let's do it. Um, thank you very much. And, uh, um, oh, am I pronouncing Isla wrong? Um, I might have a, is it uh, Isla? Okay. Um, do you have a specific process for choosing your color palettes for illustration or is it just trial and error? Um, oh, yes. Also, my name is pronounced Isla. Thank you very much for that. I prefer to be corrected uh, rather than um, butchering everyone's name throughout the entire stream. So I appreciate that, Isla. Thank you very much. A great question, Isla. Um, to be honest, I pick a base color first and, and then sometimes that can happen by like... Uh, like here's an example of like uh, the brief, the rough brief that I was provided. And um, sometimes I would even be like, okay, I like this brown. Like I'll take this brown. Like as, as you can tell, actually, I'm pretty sure I even did exactly that. Yeah, I did. Um, and I'll like chuck it to the left, chuck it to the right. And then I just kind of work off a, a diagonal axis. Um, and I, I love the fact that Illustrator implemented this, by the way. Only recently did they do this. Um, when you're working around the color square, the color wheel, even though it's not a circle, um, yeah, it changes color and then you can kind of just pick your highlight and do the same. You come down to the right when you're looking for a shade. Otherwise, if you go directly across, you get a bit more saturation and it's not going to give you that same tone that you're mm. looking for. Um, and then you kind of get your, your shadow. And yeah, then I just drag him across. I needed, I did need one more color for this one because it's a cylindrical object. And the more shades you have, the more ability you have to provide that form. So I went one more to the right and one more to the left. So I actually have five tones in this, um, in this color palette, just for the, just for the pastry. Um, nice. That's interesting. That's like a cool observation, like a cylindrical, object the more you have the more round it's going to look it's very it will be very difficult to give that illusion um with three colors but if you're doing something else you might have been able to get away with just three colors yeah yeah exactly and i have i usually try to stay within three colors because that's where you get a nice balance of like it's simple but it also looks detailed if you go a bit too far because this isn't going to be printed this big on the on the pattern it's going to be very small mm. so you got to keep that in mind but uh, yeah, sometimes sometimes I need to add a bit more. Um, yeah, great question, Isla. I love I love coloring. It's the best. It's the best part. It's the best part. <laughs> but coloring, um, coloring in for adults. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Awesome. Literally. Mm. But but funnily enough, the line art, which I should talk about, is the most important part. Um, the line art here, I've actually expanded it as a shape. But if we come down here, maybe I've expanded that dude as well, and that one too. Um, all I do to create the line art is pretty much just use my pencil tool and I just draw, I just draw shapes and it's trial and error. I don't have a Wacom tablet. I just use my, uh, I use my mouse. Uh, if you double click on the pencil tool, you can change the fidelity. I just chuck it onto smooth. Um, cause why not? AI is going to take over anyways. So may as well use it to your advantage. Um, 
and then uh and then it gives you like a pretty pretty smooth result up the stroke a little bit and uh i'm pretty sure most illustrators should be aware of like the width profiles this is crucial because what it does is it allows you to create perspective as you can see with this cream it looks like it's kind of merging into itself because we've got uh we've got the point going from like a thick end and then all the way down to a tiny little point um really really important to master that because that's what helps give you perspective and form um so i've created myself some different width profiles uh maybe i can just show you guys some this one here is like illustrator's typical one which yeah. is great because it goes from thin to thick to thin but sometimes when i'm illustrating i need or when you're working with like really long uh curves let's have let, let's let's actually see if we can how are we doing for time by the way yeah we're good we're about halfway so oh, it's great i like um i like jumping off brief and kind of just chatting a little bit geeking out a little bit on on something like this and by the way uh i know there's two more questions that i got to get to uh let's do it well. let's do it let's do it why don't you ask those questions so we can answer them and i'll get back to this line art thing okay we'll go back to the line art thing all right cool um damon has asked uh, how relevant is image tracing while doing this kind of work great question uh uh image tracing is um not relevant at all to be honest <laughs> uh image tracing is like uh when have i ever used image trace uh i've used image trace when i uh need like an icon like let's say like instagram icon this is like very like sometimes i'll get something super basic like this and it's a png or all right well it's clearly just a black square in that situation um let's see if let's see if it's a png i'll just drag this over here for now um yeah perfect we're like okay if i also grab my pen tool and have to get all the curves perfectly like yeah no nah, not happening this is where image trace comes in clutch because bang i've got it as a vector i expand the shapes and if you isolate the group isolate the group and click y use your magic wand tool you can now just get rid of all the white edges and you've got your perfect png as a vector now that's where image trace comes in clutch mm. um but I, I'm not going to lie and say I definitely, uh, you know, didn't use it as, you know, just as experiment with photography and stuff back in the day. Pretty powerful tool, but it's just like in the industry, it doesn't really come in handy that much. Yep. Cool. There you go. Um, it that is quite fun. It is quite fun to play with, but yeah, it can be um, like for, I guess, in a professional sense, um, you wouldn't be taking a photo of a cannoli and then um, no pressing image trace and um, wringing your hands with uh, the project be like, yeah, done. Yeah, no, definitely not. And every illustrator knows what image trace looks like. It's just obvious. There you go. Um, there's some interesting stuff you can do with like posterizing like images and playing with the levels for something that's like, looks like an etching or something like that and then bringing it in. Um, there's yeah. a couple of cool methods of doing that to vectorize stuff, but it will still look like, if you know what I mean, high contrast, like really vectored thing, um, tends to work very well. Um, yep. But there you go. Uh, and the other question was, uh, this one from Clinton, any printing limitations you're faced with when it comes to creating the illustrations for pajamas or is it just all digital CMYK? Good question. Um, Must've been hard to do the first one, uh, printing project uh, pajamas from Adobe Illustrator. I would have questions for the printer for sure. I'm like, uh oh, what do you want? What do you need? Yeah, no, you're right. Printing is like the bane of every graphic designer, I guess. I used to work a part of a printing company, actually. Um, that helps. I know, I know that CMYK is like the industry standard, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that printers have now, like, the technology has become good enough to convert RGB to CMYK. Mm, um, yeah. depending on what printer you have. But I don't think it's like you need to be working in CMYK. You have to export in CMYK. Otherwise, it's, you know, it's not going to print right. You're not going to get the same colors. Plus, you've got to keep in mind that the colors that I'm looking at on this monitor compared to the one right next to me and the other one, they're all going to be different. Yeah. Um, so you never really know what you're truly looking at. It's up to the manufacturer and the client to uh talk and communicate about colors they usually do strike offs and they get a bunch of uh different um examples back before they go through with the full run um so but yeah luckily like we haven't had any issues with 
uh, printing colors and stuff. That's the manufacturer's job. And I think because they do it all day, every day, they're pretty good at it. Right. Um, but I could elaborate a little bit more on that point and talk about like Pantone swatches as well. Um, really important to uh, to understand like what a swatch is. Like if you come over to your window and click on swatches, uh, you can click on this little button here, which has got your libraries. And then if you go color books, uh, you can click on Pantone color books. And the one that textiles, which is like clothing and stuff, use like industry standards it's called it's called tcx now this took me a while to figure out um, but i've downloaded their color book so if they ever came to me and said hey ck we need the tcx pattern sorry the tcx swatch for this brown for example i would have to go through and find like a brown that would be most similar to what i'm working with mm. um there are softwares for this that are actually pantone certified as well and I'd give them the swatch number. They all have different numbers, as you can see, 17340. And they have like a color book and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. And About so they're on their side, they, they match it to that. So it's less taking from what the file is. They they literally match the Pantone and mix that color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. It does get pretty, I'm sure it goes even deeper. Like color is, color is, yeah. You think it's a simple thing, but it's not. Yeah, it's interesting with the digital printing as well. I think, yeah, um, there are a lot of printers but where, where we live, in, well, I'm living in Sydney, that um, that can do like RGB, CMYK, digital file. Don't worry about yep. the PMS. Um, yep. They definitely exist. Um, so there you go. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll also mention that diagonal tip changed my life. I've not actually seen that diagonal tip that you use with the color picker. And it makes really? a lot of sense. No, um, you'd think I'd seen it all, but I have not. Um, so that was new to me. So I'm going to dig into that. That makes heaps of sense, actually. Really? Um, mm -hmm. yeah. No way. There you go. You showed me something I didn't know in Adobe Illustrator. Pretty impressive. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to happen. I thought I was going to come into here and people were going to teach me things. No way. No way. It's, that's what's amazing about sitting next to like the streaming process. It's like working in a studio and then kind of looking at the person next to you and going, hang on, what are you doing there? That looked like you mm. did something I didn't know. And that's mm. how so many designers learn, but we're so isolated, um, mm. you know, now. And I think freelancers as well are very isolated and you miss out on a lot of that that you would get working in a design studio or maybe advertising agency or something, yep. um, which is why I love this stuff and I love s streaming and it's never the thing you think that someone needs to learn. Um, so yeah, there you go. That was new to me. Hey, I've got another question. The questions keep rolling, so I'm going to keep asking. Right. Um, is the evening gents, uh, Laporta D uh, has asked, is Vector the best way to start selling custom stickers? Also, is Illustrator on the iPad different slash easier than the desktop? Thanks. Um, it depends what sticker you want to make. To be honest, you could, you could make a sticker in Procreate. You can make a sticker in Photoshop. Um, uh, Vector looks like stickers probably have a bit of a um, stereotype, like a Vector stereotype, because uh, a lot of stickers are probably made in Illustrator. Um, for no other reason than that's probably just where designers illustrate stickers but like yeah the, the, whatever is on the sticker can be created in any software uh you probably want to chuck it into illustrator and then do this because i know stickers need um like you like combine the whole thing just destroyed all my work but hopefully we can go back and then you create an offset path and then the uh yeah the printer will cut around that edge and that part will be white with the artwork in the middle and then you peel yep. it off and then there's your sticker yeah and it's great for creating a die line and everything like that as well um you can do the same thing in photoshop a few more a few more clicks but um i would suggest yes if you were new to creating stickers and you and you wanted to and your artwork and the sort of thing that you're comfortable with is illustrator it's great because then you can scale up and down right so if you're using vector based yeah. artwork then you don't have to get the exact size right and you could speak to the printer and they could say hey we can do these little ones for this amount oh but we have a sale for these larger ones today um and then you can just scale your image up and down and do whatever you like very very quickly to yep. um to create it 
mm -hmm. and send it off. Yeah, true. That, that is a good point. Yeah. Uh, scalability and vector are just like husband and wife. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Good question there. A really good question. Yeah. And as CK said, yeah, you can make, the, you could make it out of anything. You could send them a PDF, which would be, you know, um, or an EPS or something like that. And I'm yep. sure most sticker places would be able to print it for you. No problem. Yep. But yeah. If I was doing it, if you were going to make a sticker CK, what would you use? <laughs> Illustrator. Illustrator. All right. Yeah, me too. I make, I make PDFs in Illustrator. I don't touch any other software. <laughs> I love that. Own, own the Illustrator. I love it. I'm with you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, are there any other questions relating to AI? Oh, this is a great question from Jacqueline. Oh my goodness. I love this. I love this question. Um, I am not a great, I'm not a great illustrator and sometimes use my own photographs to trace and make it mine. Is this a sin in the creative world? No, no, that's, that's right. the best thing. <laughs> oh my God. Jacqueline, you've stumbled across a gold mine here. Not necessarily like, like mon mon monetarily or financially, but like personally, what you're doing unintentionally is, cr is creating your own art. Like it is 100% yours by taking that photo, chucking it into Illustrator and having whatever end result come to fruition. That's that's your art. You can't like no one can take that away from you, um, which is an amazing feeling as an artist, especially these days with um, uh, artificial intelligence and people uh, creating a bunch of stuff from other artists work. And like, obviously you can be inspired, but um, like for example, let's see if I can make a quick detour here. Uh, like, okay, let's let's just have a look at this. I made this a few years ago of Thanos. Okay, it's pretty cool. And look, I wouldn't be able to like take a photo of Thanos because it doesn't exist. So that's mm. the only way I can create that artwork. But um, is it really mine? You know what I mean? Like, I don't. I still don't feel like attached to it like I do with some of the photography and vector art that I solely create myself. So. No, it is not a sin. What I think you're doing is amazing and um, you should keep doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I to totally agree for what it's worth. Um, and um, yeah, sometimes it can be like, well, if I didn't, if I didn't go out and, and, and buy the paint and like stand in front of an easel and, and sweat, you know, sweat uh, blood and tears and, and then, I don't know, large format print it and then go in and digitize. Like yeah. artwork doesn't have to be a pain. It can sometimes be fun. It can sometimes be really quick. It could be a very quick, simple process. But as long as you like the output, um, that's yours. That's mm -hmm. that's your out. That's your a. Yeah, you have total ownership of that artwork, which is, as CK was saying, uh, a very big thing I think these days. Because you know, like from start to finish, concept to execution, there's nothing that's anybody else's. Um, yep. The only way to make that more yours is if you built the camera from scratch. Like it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's totally yours, which is very, very cool. But yeah, the process yeah. doesn't have to be hard and complicated or um, painstaking. No, and that's not, that's not to say that if you do jump onto uh, Pinterest and find some photographers, really cool work or like uh, a, a character uh, that you really like and want to turn it into something, that's, that's not to say that you can't do that. And that's not going to be, you know, considered your art either. Um, I guess I looked at it from a bit more of like a copyright perspective, just kind of trying to cover my ass. Um, but to, yeah, I'll be honest, like it is important to t take things off the internet, be inspired, um, especially when you're learning. So yeah, uh, I just want to put that out there as well. I don't want to make people think like that, you know, that are going and getting inspiration or using the internet to aid their artwork. Like sometimes you have to like photo compositors that create these like mystical worlds. Um, like you have to like, yeah, um, it's sure. part of the job. So yeah, it's a good point. So, uh, yeah, art is, is subjective and stuff, but when it, when it comes to calling it my own or if I'm looking to sell it as well, uh, I like to, yeah, I like to, the whole process to be kind of like from me. So yeah, cool. that's a great question, Jacqueline. I like that a lot. Some great questions coming through today. Um, and so we're about 10 minutes out. I might mention that if um, okay. you wanted to get to the pattern part, it's up to you. Yeah, I yep. um, don't know. Let's do it. Yeah. Where yeah. You so be at. <laughs> I was going to add some, um, I was going to add some uh, little pistachios and stuff. Um, but you know what we can do? 
Uh, yeah, we can start adding it to the pattern. And then, so what I like to do, let's say I'm finished. This guy needs a little bit more, uh, a little bit more shading in his cream. Um, but we've done an all right job so far, actually, considering we've been talking the whole time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I group all of my little characters. I'll just copy them over. I like to duplicate a lot because then I can always go back. I kind of see it as like a bit of a save checkpoint. Yeah, totally. Um, we'll make this background just, uh, right, we'll just delete it for now. Um, then, then what I like to do is duplicate it again and just reflect it because then that creates variety. Mm. Um, and I might even do it. I might even just kind of like rotate this one a bit. Cause then I can start to scatter them around. I put these guys up here. Yeah. It just kind of, it's like kind of like mixing up a, a ball of numbers for it, for a jackpot or something. Mm. Um, just want it to not look like it's the same image. So you're trying to use them as, as often as possible to get the density of the pattern. Yeah. Um, but you want it to look almost as if they're all unique. Yeah, exactly. And like, as you can see here, we've got two of the same guy that's next to each other. So then we've got to play a little bit of a game where we're like, okay, well, uh, there you go. That top down bird's eye view one isn't within the radius. So fill the spot. Um, and then you kind of, yeah, kind of just eyeball it. Like imagine if you were like water, does it seem like you could flow freely through all of these patterns, mm. uh, all, all these illustrations? Yes or no. All right, we need a few more. So maybe we'll grab this one, put it here. Um, these guys' hands are meant to be white. So maybe we'll just do that. It's for my own OCD sake. Um, are there any other questions in the... In there the are. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. long does it... Uh, Jenna is asking, how long does it take to make one of these patterns for clothing? Um... It depends on the brief. Cannoli's cannoli's reasonably simple. There's, there's a, there is a little bit of curves and um, color work and like uh, texture that I need to do with like these little things here. But um, I've had some like pretty time intensive ones where like we've added limbs, hands and feet and movement. Um, right. We, that takes a while. Mm. But then I've also had really simple ones like popcorn. Um, so it, right. do, it does depend. This, this one here is probably going to take about five hours, I'd say, mm -hmm. all up, start to finish. But I work very quickly as well in Illustrator too, so it's, uh, especially when I've got the Psytrance going. Psytrance, is that the yeah. music of choice? Nah, not always. All right. I've got a bit of a playlist, it's but like when I when Watching I the Matrix up, in the background. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, okay, let's just say, let's just say we like this for now to turn it into a repeatable there is something special that needs to happen. And I always enjoy this part. So we're going to grab our shape tool and we're going to come up to the corner, the intersect, and we're going to draw a little shape. Now that didn't really snap onto it like I would have liked to. And it's really important that you make sure you're on the corner of the artboard here. Okay, let's just make this another color so we've got some distinction. Probably not the best color. All right, there we go. Now, direct selection tool, select bottom two anchors, and come all the way down and we just want to like attach it to the bottom here and then we can just drag this out now uh select the characters that are off the edge alongside the shape the shape needs to be in front and then hit control seven this is going to mask it oh, now let's copy this mask. okay yeah clipping mask cool so let's let's copy this mask and grab these anchor points here and drag it back onto the artboard and then hit control sh uh, control shift V. Oh, yeah. Make sure you're on the artboard. It's going to paste that mask that we just copied before and let's drag it over to the other side. Holding down so shift, I assume. Holding, yes, yes. Thanks for that, Flynn. <laughs> holding down shift. Um, Interesting. That's a cool way to do it. Yeah. Okay. So now we can see where it changes the pattern a little bit because it's like, okay, it changes, yeah, it brings them over. So I'm going to have to just rejig some things. We're going to do it again. How are we doing for time? Five minutes left. Perfect. Damn, you, you were right. It goes quickly. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. 
I'm enjoying this though. I want to keep going. I know it's great. It's good having a chat. We could keep. We you, would you would love to keep going, but um, the Hans's events are timed, unfortunately. So it'll it'll just cut us off. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's, yeah. that's understandable. So I've just we, done the I'll, same. I'll, I'll take this uh, chance to mention that we will be back uh, tomorrow with Chris. So we're back on Wednesday. Um, so please uh, please come and join us again. Uh, it's 1 p.m. in Sydney and Melbourne, but depending on where you're watching it, it obviously could be a very different time for you. Um, but at the same time, this stream is on 24 hours tomorrow. Awesome. So join us for that and we'll continue yeah. and we'll answer more questions. Yep, we're going to be doing more photography-related things in Illustrator as well uh, this time around. But it doesn't mean we can't answer more illustrative questions if you, if you have any. So we're going to do it to this last guy. Um, the tricky part with this sometimes, and I do try to avoid it, is, um, uh, okay, I need to move this down. Oh, damn, that kind of sucks. I need to maybe move this one up a bit. Cause it, yeah. But, but now I'm trying to perfect it, obviously for the client. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, sometimes Flynn, when there's a, uh, when there's a artwork that's in the corner, then you have to, um, you have to apply it in every corner. It gets a little bit, a little bit crazy. So let's duplicate it over. Now, this is how we double check guys. So we grab the artboard tool and we just hold down Alt and Shift. And we drag it over to the left and then we can select the two and drag it down. And as we can see guys, we nice. have a fully repeatable pattern. Um, very cool. That was very quick too. Yeah, super quick. Yeah, easy. I like that uh, clipping mask technique. It's quite clever. Yeah, it's a little bit cheeky, isn't it? Mm, it's a good way to do it. It's, it's a good way to be sure as well that it's going to directly jump across like perfectly as well. Mm. So um, when it comes to background choicing uh, or just decision making, I, I, I preferably like to use colors from the color palette because subconsciously it's just really appealing to the eye. Um, so let's say I usually just go for six and what would happen if I go like, Hey, I'll go like maybe like this kind of highlight from the, from the pastry and maybe we'll work down to there. And then maybe we'll take some, some, uh, color from the cream as well. Nice. And they all work because it's from the color palette. Yeah, they all they all work. They all work pretty well, don't they? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. What, what, what else is there I would like to mention in, in between the time? The only other thing I would say is our outlines are black and that's okay. I've, I have submitted a lot of art, uh, illustrations with black outlines, but I've come to realize through a bit of experience that it's not always the case. Um, it even, even just, let's see. Yeah. Even just selecting like the brown mm. and then going really close down the bottom, but not black right. is a cool way to just create cohesion, uh, with the illustration. So it's not too harsh and you create this really nice, yeah, illustration. So that's a nice way to just like put the cherry on top. Very cool. Like yeah, it. we never, well, we never, yeah, tell me. We're pretty much out of time. That's all I was going to go. say. Right. Um, yeah. Hey, why don't we go out with one question? Because there's one question that I think I missed. Um, sure. And the question is uh, from Julia. What's your advice for freelance graphic designers in getting work and relying on it financially? For example, publishing, personal work and advertising business on social media, etc. cetera. Um, uh, I... I guess it depends on what, what your situation is. You're relying on it financially though. So I honestly would suggest to, you have to make an effort to put yourself out there. You cannot rely on Instagram to just bring in the client work for you. It will help and it'll, it'll definitely make you reputable. Um, but if you want to get those high paying clients, you have to go out there and you really do have to sell yourself. Um, that's something that I've noticed and I found and I have to implement myself, even with um, a solid following on Instagram, like it's still it's still not enough. You need to build those relations and, and put yourself out there in the world, which isn't easy. So um, yeah, that would be my advice. It's just, the, it's just the honest truth. Yeah, 
That's awesome. Well, hey, we're out of time. So before we get cut off, this has been great. Thank you everyone for your awesome questions. Um, and for those that are new to Adobe Live, we're here every Tuesday and Wednesday um, hanging out. And this week we'll be here Thursday, Friday as well. So there's a lot going on this Perfect. week. Um, yeah. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time with CK. Thank you for everything, CK. It's been great hanging out with you. That's okay. Thanks for having me guys. Great questions and best of luck with all of your creative work. Awesome. All right, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, guys. Bye.